Right then, so in the last lesson we made our type definitions to describe the data on the graph and also specify the entry points to the graph using the special query type. And we pass those into the Apollo server so it knows how to set the graph up. Next up, we need to make some resolver functions which allow us to decide how we respond to queries to the graph. So it might be that if a query comes in for all the games, then we could maybe fetch all the game's records from a database and return those as a response. Now in our case, we don't have a database set up for this and instead I'm just gonna use some local data stored in a variable in another file. But you could quite easily hook this up to whatever database you prefer and work with that data instead. So for now, what I'm doing is making a new file called underscore db.js, which stands for database. And this underscore thing isn't necessary, it's just a little naming convention I sometimes use when I'm making a data file. But anyway, inside this file, I'm gonna paste in a bunch of data, which is essentially just three arrays stored in variables. One array for the reviews, one for the games, and one for the authors. And we can see the different properties that these objects inside the arrays have are the same ones that we defined in the types that we made in the last lesson. The only difference is that the reviews objects, we have a game ID property and also an author ID property. And this is for later when we start to talk about how data is related, but the rest of the properties match up to the ones that we defined in our different types. So if you want to grab this data as well, you can do. It's all up on my repo. I'm going to leave the exact link to that file to grab this data down below the video. Anyway, now we have our data. Let's start making some resolver functions for the three entry points that we defined in our query type because we need to send a response for queries to each of those. So then to make our resolver functions, we'll first make a new constant called resolvers. And then we're gonna set that equal to an object. And inside this, we can make resolver functions for each different type that we defined. Now to begin with, we wanna make resolver functions for the query type because that root query type is where we define entry points to the graph and specify what data should be returned for them. We'll also be making resolver functions for other types later on as well, like the review type and author type when we start talking about related nested data. But for now, we just wanna make resolver functions for every field defined in the root query type. So that's one for reviews, one for games, and one for authors. And to do that, we make a property called query, capital Q, which matches exactly the type name. And this property is gonna be an object as well. And now we can define in this object resolver functions for each of the properties defined on our root query type. So the way this is going to work is that we need basically a resolver function for reviews called reviews, one for games called games, and one for authors called authors, and the names need to match. So if we go over here, our first one is going to be for games, and then this is a function which returns some data. And basically, we want to return the data to a user that they've requested. Now, they've requested games, so we need to send back an array of game objects. Now, in order to do this, we need access to this DB file, so let me import that at the top. I'm gonna to come to the top and say DB, and then just paste in this import. So import DB from dot forward slash underscore DB dot JS. And then down here, we can use this to say DB dot, and then whatever the property is down here. So we've got games, authors, and reviews that match up to this data. So we wanna send back DB dot games. And that's all there is to it. We're sending back the array of games. Now remember, when a user makes a query, they can do so like this. So let me just do some comments like this. And if they make a query, they might make a query that looks like this, games. And then inside here, they want specific properties like just the title. Now, if we're returning the full array right here, you think, well, we're returning the ID, the title, the platform as well. However, Apollo handles that for us. All it needs to know is where to grab the data. And then if we're just requesting the title from each of the games, it will do its magic on this data to take out any of the other stuff, like the platform and the ID, and it will just return the title property for each one. So we don't have to worry about which fields are returned. Apollo server is gonna do that for us, okay? Which is really cool. So let's get rid of that. That's the first resolver function done, dead simple. So the second one is gonna be for reviews. Let's do that, come back to index and we'll say reviews 
and this is also a function. We need to return db.reviews. And then the final one is going to be for authors. So let's do that, authors. And then inside here, we need to return db.authors. All right, and that's it. We've made our three now basic resolver functions for this data over here. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So before this works, we need to pass this resolvers object into here as the second property on this argument. So let's do that. We'll say resolvers. And that's it. So now what we want to do is start up this server so that we can test it from the front end. So let me do that by opening up the terminal. And if you've got Nodemon installed, you could type Nodemon and then the name of the file, which is what I'm going to do. And basically what Nodemon does is it restarts the server every time you make a change to the server. Otherwise, if you're just using Node and then the file name, you need to manually cancel the server every time you make a change and rerun it to pick up that change. So we're going to say Nodemon and then the name of the file we want to run, which is index. And hopefully, oops, we get an error. So what's the error? Du -du 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 -du. So refuse, did you mean review? Let me have a look at this. So we've got refuse down here. Let's go to schema. Oops, there it is. Okay. So this shouldn't be plural because it's a singular type inside a list. All right. So save that. And now hopefully this is going to work. I'm going to cancel out this process and run it again. And okay, the app crashed again. <laughs> we have another error. So let's have a look what this one is. Okay, address is already in use. Okay, so that's because I've got another instance of a GraphQL server up and running. So let me just close that down first of all. Okay, so I've just done that. I'm gonna cancel out of this again and try running it third time. Hopefully this is gonna work now. Okay, cool. So now the server is ready at port 4000, awesome. All right, so now if you visit localhost port 4000 in the browser, you're going to see Apollo Explorer. So it automatically spins this up for us so we can test out our GraphQL server. And let me just take you on a quick tour of this. First of all, if you go to schema, then you're going to see the different queries that we can currently make. So you can see it's looked at our code and it's seen the different queries we can make, the different entry points, our authors, games, and reviews right here. And it also shows the data type. So if we click on this, it's gonna show the different fields that that data type has, and it shows what we can basically get back, all right? So we have those three data types right here. Also, if we look at scalar types, it's gonna come down here, it shows the different things we're using, directives. Okay, we don't really need to worry about directives for now. If you go back to Explorer, this panel on the left is where we're going to make the queries. This is where we're going to get the response. Down here, you might see another panel as well. This is for variables, which we're going to look at later on. So let's make our first query. You can name this something different if you want. So I could say something like games query to get the games. You don't have to name it that. It doesn't really matter what it's called. But now I want to get the games. So I can click on that. And remember, we have to open up our curly braces and specify what fields we want from this particular uh, resource. So I could say that I want the title of each game and also the platform of each game. So now if I click on this, we can see we get an array of all the games inside a data object. So we have this one, the title and the platform, title and platform and so forth. So we're getting all of the games, awesome. All right, so let's change this to something else. Let's try the authors. And from each one, we want the name and we also want the verified status. Click on this and it's going to fetch those for us. Mario verified true, Yoshi false, Peach true. Awesome. Final one, let us try the other resource, which is reviews. And then from here, we can get, for example, the ID, the rating and the content. I'm going to click on this and we can see all those reviews. Now, like I said, you can just request some of the field so I could get rid of content and I could get rid of ID and just say that I want the rating, click on this. And now it still fetches all the reviews, but we only get that rating property. So we're not over fetching, which is awesome. So even though we explicitly return the full array of data, Apollo is using our resolver function and the data we return to automatically filter out any of the fields the user doesn't need, which is awesome. So this is all working now. But what if we wanted to fetch just a single review or a single author or a single game? 
Well, for that, we need to use something called query variables, and we'll talk about those in the next lesson.